everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So as promised, here is the stand and pop card without using any specific dies. So you will all be able to make this and it's a really fun card. So what it does is it folds flat like this and then this little back piece will fold down and it will all fit into your envelope. Now this was my prototype. This was the one I was actually making alongside the one that I shared on Monday. So if anybody hasn't seen Monday's, that was using a beautiful uh, clock die and I'll link that one up here. And um, I was doing thinking of ways to use that, and when I started doing it, I thought, oh, let's just try it. So I, like I said, I was playing around, and this is the one I've done. So the size of this is a bit bizarre. It's six by five, which is not really a size that I would do, because I had to cut a few bits just to kind of play around with it. But you can see when it comes down, how this looks. And then this back piece, I actually really like this one. So it's like a little page, so when you open it, you have a place to write your message, but also that now becomes a stand. And what it will do is it will keep the card perfectly upright in a in a 45 degree angle. Okay, and it just, I put it on the mantle downstairs just to kind of stand and look at it. And I was, again, I just loved it. I bring it up closer. I've done all this decoration. I'll show you the collection that I've used in a moment. And I just think it's a really fun, happy card. And this would work for so many occasions. It would make a lovely actual cake tier you could have it as a wedding card, any you know masculine theme cards, you just have to change the papers, but you can certainly go to town with this and I'll talk you through all of that. It's nice and easy to make. I think it's got a great profile and I'm really pleased with this one. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial and let's get straight into it. Okay, so this is the paper pad I'm using. It's a old Dovecraft one and there was all the, you know, the embellishments and everything to go with it and it's called Make a Wish, but I know there's still places online where you can get this, so I'll share any links below. But you can see all the lovely patterns and the things that I love about Dovecraft papers is they are they always have elements that you can fussy cut and I love that or you can pop them through your scan and cut and you know they can cut them for you, but I've cut the the party hats, I've cut the cakes, I've cut the presents, but then you've also got balloons there, you've got you know, your sundae and your ice cream and you've got cocktails as well. It's a really fun one and then some great background papers. So what I've chosen here is I've actually gone for the same papers but I've gone for a brighter colour and I think a better size because this one will now fit into a five by seven envelope. So yeah, so I've gone ahead and just fussy cut all these pieces. I'm gonna show you how to make these tiny little tassels. They're super cute and these ones I've used the holographic, the Dovecraft holographic card and I just think that's going to add some lovely sparkle. So we'll talk through all those and um, we'll talk through the back pieces, the mats and layers, all of, keep all the blue bits I know, they're the bits that are the first bits we use so <laughs> we'll crack on with them first. Okay so first of all for the back you want a piece of seven by four and a half. Then for the front, you want a piece that is nine by four and a half. For the pop out piece on the front, you want a piece that is six and a quarter by three. This piece is gonna go on the very front and this is five by two. So that's the full width of the card. And then this little piece is, to be honest, you may not find you need it, but it's just like an extra support here. It will, I guess, it, yeah, you will need it because it will stop this bit kind of fanning out and maybe sliding. So, um, yeah, this piece is three by one. This piece you want to score along the three inch side at half an inch and two and a half. And then this piece should have done the scoring before. This is the six and a quarter by three. Along the six and a quarter side, you want to score at a quarter of an inch, five and a quarter. That piece is no scoring, and then this piece, which is that four and a half by nine, oops, yeah, you want to score at one inch and three. In fact, I'd flip it over and score the three again, because you're going to fold the three so it's a valley, and then that first one so it's a mountain, so it's like that. Okay, then for the mats and layers, I'll talk through those in a bit because we don't need to use the scoreboard anymore and that will make more sense when we stick it all together. Okay, I just started putting glue on that piece and you don't, you just want to put your glue on this piece here, okay, because you don't want to go all the way down to the bottom, so just like so. And then I'm just going to rub this bottom bit away and then I'm just going to stick this one on to the back of this one. Line it up, like so, and then that piece will overhang at the bottom, 
and it will line up so you'll have a one inch overhang here which will sit perfectly with this one inch fold there. Okay then we want this piece here which we're going to sit over the top there. So this white mat is a piece of four and a quarter by five and three quarters and then the pattern paper is four by five and a half. So again I'm just going to add my glue just to the back of that panel. Then I've got this piece which is going to go in here. This is optional but you can see it there. It's just a little bit more detail if you want but again entirely up to you. And this is a piece of one and three quarters by four and a quarter. That's the white piece and the pattern piece is one and a half by four. So again I'm going to stick that one down. Then we want this piece here, so just fold and burnish all the score lines so they're all mountain folds, so it will be like that, the little quarter inch piece, okay? And then before you stick it down, it's just a little bit easier, this piece here, I'll give you the measurements for, it's just to mat that square. You may want to stamp on this, you may do a nice coloured stamped image, or fussy cut, um, die cut something, but I'm just going to be sticking all of that, you know, lovely decoration there. So I'm just sticking that in the middle. And this one was two and three quarters by three and three quarters. Now we can start sticking this one down. So the end where you've just got the one inch piece, okay, not this one here, we'll do that last. You just want to add some glue, like so. And you're going to pop this so it butts right up to that score line, but make sure you've got it nice and, you know, in the middle of this, this piece here. So I'm just going to lay that down about there. You kind of wiggle it around a bit. If you just fold the whole thing over, you'll be able to also see there if you've got it lined up. I could probably go across to the right just a little bit. And just flip the whole thing over and it's just easier for you to be able to just push down on that and make sure you get it all secure. So I'm just going to spend a minute doing that. Okay, while that's drying, I've just got this piece. Just fold over the tab so they're both mountain folds like this. And you want to add glue onto both of them. Okay, and then what you're going to do is turn it up so this runs flat with the bottom of, it will be flat with the bottom of the card. You want to stick it onto this piece so it runs flush with the bottom. If you lie it down, keeping that nice folded piece running flat along there. So again, if I just bring it up, it's right at the bottom of the card there. Okay, fold the whole thing up and just fold that down. It will meet up with it perfectly. So you can just sit here now and just push down on everything, making sure that's all secure. And then again, while we're still there, you want to add glue onto this whole area, just that, that one inch section. Okay, and then this piece, you want to sit so it, the bottom of this runs with the bottom of that piece, but you will have a quarter of an inch overhanging on each side. But you want it to be flat with the top, with that bit but it overhangs and we're creating this piece here. You see I've got all that overhanging here above that one inch piece but it is flush with the bottom. Again just spend a minute now just making sure everything is stuck down. Okay then I've got this piece which is going to decorate this here and this measures one and three quarters by four and three quarters for the white piece and the pattern is one and a half by four and a half. So again, I'm just going to stick that one down. Okay, and now you pull down that piece and that's what you should have. So this is that bit that overhangs, but it's running flush with the bottom there. And then all we've got left to do is pop some glue on that quarter inch tab, fold it right over so it's flat and fold the card back up again into that position, into its flat position. And now that whole piece will fit into a five by seven envelope because this is your, you know, your kind of um, width. The widest part is this piece here. But what it also means is when you decorate and have things overhanging, they can overhang up to the width of this. Because if you see on this one, when it all folds flat, see I've got all these bits overhanging. So that's why you cut the, that's why you cut the back piece in slightly to the actual width of the envelope that you want and it just then allows you to be able to have that space to decorate. So again, I'm just going to make sure that all sticks down. So I'm going to flip it over and work on the back for a minute. So 
To be honest, I was thinking about it and I thought you don't really need to have this piece as well as this, but then some of you might because the idea is, is that this is going to stick on there and then I'm having this decorative piece like so. So it's up to you. I don't know whether some of you might want to skip this piece, but I'll give you the measurements in a second. But this one I'm going to lay down first of all. It's a very, very strong card. I'm using heavyweight cardstock and I'm using the cloud. So the whole thing is, is yeah, it's just incredibly strong. So this one, you want the bottom, the white piece, to go flat with the bottom. Okay, so the measurement that I've given will, you know, give you a nice border on three sides, but you want it to be flush with the bottom. So it's four and a quarter. I think it was five and, um, yeah, six and seven eighths of an inch. And then you want another piece that's the same, but along the four and a quarter you want to score at two and one eighth of an inch right down through the middle. Stamp it on the left hand side, fold it up so it's like a book, okay? And then you're going to add glue all to the back of the side where you've stamped. And like I said this is going to be your stand. And then this will sit perfectly over that white piece and it will run flush with the bottom. Okay, so it's very neat, and I'm just going to fold that right over. And then this piece here, again, nice and decorative. This is one and three quarters by six and five eighths. And then the pattern paper is one and a half by six and three eighths. And again, and this one you do want it to have a nice border on all four sides. That's why it's slightly funny measurements on the back piece, just because. I just thought it looked odd having the, the white piece that I laid down first here to have a border on all four sides and then the stand to come down and you have a bit of, I just thought it, again, I'm always looking at things on how they finally finish and I'm, I'm very much about the um, things looking pleasing to the eye and that just didn't work for me. So that's why I thought it's best if it goes completely flat with the bottom. But now you can see you've got your stand. Now if you want to decorate that more you can. I may well add some more paper to that. I've got a few scraps now. Okay sorry I just had to stop the video. So now when I pull up the side you'll see there it looks really cool. So then you just position your stand and the thing I like about this is it's easy for someone to understand when they get this out of an envelope because that's just going to come down. They're going to do that naturally and then they'll see this and, and work out that that's obviously part of the stand but now hey. So then we need to decorate. So I'll just talk you through how you make these little tassels. So you just want a piece of one and a quarter squared card and then I've just got my snips and I'm just cutting down very thin amounts. I do have the vegetable scissors but there is it's too thick. The strips I want nice thin ones. So I'm just going along here with my snips and just creating lots of little strips, tassels. Like so, and then I'm just going to curl it slightly like that, and then I'm just going to start rolling it. So, just like you would, it, they are just little tassels, but I think they're so cute. Just roll and roll and roll, and then when you get to the end, so just rolled it up there. I'm just going to pop a little bead of glue and then just roll that around. Don't burn yourself. And then what I started to do is just kind of like fan it out a little bit because you'll find you'll be able to manipulate that card. And then I'm just going to cut off that hot glue now that's set just because it was a bit oozy. And then what I've done is I've just got the end of my bone folder and just kind of squashed it because you don't want this to add a, a huge amount of bulk. I mean the card's got a bit of bulk to it anyway but just kind of flatten the, the knot but then just kind of spread it out a little bit like so and that's what I've done with those. So now they're ready to stick on the card. So I have gone and cut two of the presents and then one of the cake and the cake I've, I've put them all on foam actually the presents and the cake so I'm just going to take the backing off of those and I'm just going to have it about there nice and centered and then the presents, I've already put some foam just on one side because this is going to overhang so I don't want anything sticky. So I'm going to pop that one there and then this one on the other side. 
Oh, that's got a bit of foam overhang in there. I'll have to, when you have that, see I've got the foam overhanging, I'm just going to use some of my anti-static powder and just rub it on the back of that and then it won't stick. Then these ones here, I've got kind of poking out from the top, so I'm just going to pop a bit of glue there and just slide that one in. Where did I have it? Like, like that. There we go. And then again this one here. Then the happy birthday is from the new stamp set that I shared in my What Did I Get? I absolutely love it and I've already started using some of the other ones. Um, and it's just this one here. And then I just went and fussy cut it, just kind of following the, the flow of the, the letters. And um, yeah, just how it looked quite nice. So again, I've gone and popped some foam on the back, like so. And then this one is going to sit in the middle there. Ooh like so and then I just need to stick these down so I've got two that are going to come out from behind the front piece so I'm just going to pop a little bit of hot glue and I'm going to have one there and once they're completely secure I will fan them out a little bit more as well and then I'm going to have another one oh, oh, just there And then just again, just kind of pull them. You can be a bit more tough with them because they're secure now. You don't want to pull on them, I'm just prizing them apart. And there you have it. I am so pleased with this. I think it looks absolutely adorable. It's such a lovely looking card. And I don't think there's going to be anybody that you give that to that won't enjoy this. It's just, it. It doesn't take long to do, and I think that's a nice thing because when someone gets this, you know, you can spend a long time on it. By all means, you may be doing a lot of colouring and, like I said, and going, you could do a beautiful bouquet, you know, and lots of detail and flowers, but you don't have to do an awful lot for it to still look pretty spectacular. And I think this is, and it, I think it is, it's, I think it's a bit of a showstopper card. I might put it in the showstopper album because if anybody likes those big kind of grand cards, then head over, I'll pop that up here actually. It's a really good playlist with bigger cards. So again, like I say, always for those special birthdays, but this would look great with a big number in the centre there. So I love it. Oh, I am. Can you be in love with a card? I'm in love with a card. I love it. Anyway, you know, I get really excited. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this version using no dies. And I'll be looking out for your versions over on the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook page. So thank you for watching and I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. Bye.